ouvrant la porte et sortant le moment. Ouvrant quelque chose et t'offre sa bonne étrange. Hi again. Today I want to talk a little bit about um, distraction. If you have any mental illness or something, they normally tell you to find yourself a distraction or a hobby or something that takes you away from it. Now mine's been the watches um, and also photography and many other things. But I'm going to talk a little bit about photography today. And you'll see in my previous videos I've been out taking photos. And you'll also see from my VM vlog 13, I mentioned about great portrait photographers, Lord Litchfield, Lord Snowden, David Bailey, that sort of thing. So my own photography basis is I would class myself as an amateur, at best, photographer. I have an enthusiast level camera um, and I enjoy doing it, so something I enjoy as a hobby. Partially the reason some of this video came about was a couple of things I received for the post today. One was a magazine, which I have talked about before. It's a copy of Wired and this relates to my photography or my interest in photography. The other thing I received for the post is this. So what we're going to do first is we'll go for a quick unboxing because I'm actually super excited about this. So this is something I've talked about previously and I have mentioned at one point um, that I probably wouldn't get. But by having this one, this is the Ice Star watch with the canvas strap. But I really, really like the watch now. Um, this is the smaller size in the canvas, the canvas is even smaller. When I did the review for this watch, if you go back and watch the review, um, or even the blog where I featured when I got this, I always said that I wanted the ice style watch in the forest green, which had the silicon strap. Here you go. So this. the one I really wanted. This is the ice. So this is the ice star watch in forest green. Now you can tell the gold is pretty much the same finish but it's a bigger watch darker green because I have got watches that are this sort of size um, this is around the 44mm to 45mm size. It actually fits quite well. It does, it looks alright. So anyway, so that's that little unboxing out of the way. Actually, I've just actually realised that this comes with a... Strange enough, most watches you get this. Where it holds the strap in place when it's around here. Um, it didn't work out which one was here, but it's actually <laughs> just a spare. So if you ever lose this one, or it breaks, We've got another. Again, just a really nice touch. I mentioned um, the magazine that I showed you a minute ago, and that was to show you that magazines do inspire my photography. Now, I, photography, I like mainly sort of landscapes and architecture now, but I always wanted, or many days ago, I wanted to do sort of people, portraits, glamour, and studio work. And I've been inspired by the magazines I read. Now, I've explained the these before, I've shown you these before in another video. Wired and Evo. Now the photography in these I'm going to see from the cover from this one that they really take their photography very seriously. So if you look at some of the interior shots from the magazine, they've always been known for taking great car photos, which is a great inspirer. On the other side of it, Wired takes photos, always, Wired have a very similar style in that they're a known style of pictures. Their pictures are always very, very similar. You can tell a wired image from another image straight away. And it's always their pictures of people in their studio shots. So you can picture here. Instantly that picture is recognisable as a wired image, the way it's shot. They do this throughout through their pictures of their people that they're talking to, as well as the stuff, the products that they feature. And their product feature features are also very well. So the shooting is always very well laid out, very, very well lit. Um, it's just brilliant. I just love the way that these people shoot these things. Yeah. Now, I do also read other magazines occasionally, as I've shown you earlier in the year. 
buy a, a magazine with watches in, it was actually GQ. Strangely enough, I, I love about, one thing I love about this issue of GQ. Now I didn't know this until the other day. This this is a GQ edition with the men of the year in it, and it's got Casey Neistat in it. Um, I'd watched his video about being in men of the year, having already bought this and not realised that he was in it. Which is an odd thing, because I hadn't actually read it because of my depression. I hadn't been able to read this. I've only just read it recently, um, and I've had it since sort of October last year. You've got this trump -ageddon. What would happen if Donald Trump wants to get in to be the President of the United States? Whoops. <laughs> I used to read, when it was out, a sort of a more men's magazine. I subscribed to GQ at one point, but I read a more men's magazine was this one. Arena. But now you can just tell from the shots, the layout and the style of this magazine um, even in the anniversary editions when they do a spread in the beginning. Tastefully done. Again, the images are shot in a very professional looking way, very well coloured, styled. I just love the way these things are shot. I watch fashion TV and that's again to get the inspiration on how well they work. So see all these photographers together working with all their crew, the equipment they use. I love to see what people's cameras are. Do they use certain size lenses? Are they using massive, great big macro 100mm lenses or 85mm lenses? Hasselblad medium format cameras or Mamiya or whatever. I like to watch what they do and how they work with the way people like stuff, the makeup. I'm interested in fashion anyway, so fashion TV is quite an interesting watch. But the photography side of it is just very interesting to see how stuff's done. I also watch other programmes about photography as well. Um, if there's anything on sort of BBC4 or other channels about history of photography or photographers, um, Annie Leibovitz or, as I said, Patrick Litchfield, David Bailey, Snowden, that sort of stuff, I always find it interesting. And I like to watch how, even Chris Packham, I like to watch how other people work and the inspiration they give others from their shots. If you can recreate them or you can do your own but in a similar style. As I said with the magazines, I never used to read lads mags as such. I knew they were about, they used to hang around. Um, but again, they weren't shot in that little style, glamorous sort of style I look. I did, however, though, just as it, you do, I bought the last editions of Nuts to and effect gel, which has actually got a really nice photo on the cover. That's really well shot. Um, the rest of the shots, actually, the Hollywood shots are actually very well done. And these, again, have to, I think they've actually done a really good job this time with the lighting. I always saw the lads makes uh, as a bit of a cop out for men that maybe live with their parents still. They're not quite an adult mag, they've got some titillation in them, a bit of risky bits to them. And there was a lot of magazines that men could go and buy without being ashamed to buy an adult mag. Now, my inspiration for photography, a lot of it came from my father. Now my dad did pictures like this. This was shot one morning many many years ago on a film camera, a film Pentax LX. And it was shot about, well it got there about four o'clock in the morning. Took some filters with him. The thing then was you never knew what your image was going to come out like. So that obviously inspired me as a kid and as I grew up to have a hobby, and only a hobby, that's all it's ever going to be for me. <laughs> Nah, nah.